Hi, my name is Dale Cook and I'm an accredited practicing dietitian. Today's webinar will help you understand how to read a food label so you feel more informed when choosing food packages. So why do we read food labels? Generally to find something out about the food in the package. In this webinar, I'll talk about how you can determine if the food in the package is something that you might choose to eat every day. As you know, no foods are completely off the table when you have diabetes, but it's a question of whether you choose it every day or just choose it sometimes. So we'll go through the food label to work out what you can learn from it. We'll look at what's on the food label. We'll look at how to compare products. Um, we'll look consider what to look for on the food label and then look at those everyday versus sometimes food choices and where to go for more information. So hopefully as we um, go through this journey, it'll help you make sense of your food, packaged food more often. Okay, let's start at the start. If you wander through a shop that sells food, you'll see that some food labels, um, some foods have labels and some don't. So what foods don't have a label? Fresh fruit and vegetables don't. And I'd encourage everybody to eat plenty of fresh fruit and vegetables every day. Most food, packaged foods do have a food label. When we look at other foods found in packages, there's two types which won't have a food label. The first is a single um, serve item from a multi-pack. For example, a wrapped muesli bar from a packet of six muesli bars. And the second uh, food which won't have a label is the kind of food that is packaged on premises of a shopping center or supermarket, such as bread products in the bakery section or meats um, from the deli section of your supermarket. A food package contains a lot of information. The first thing that you'll notice is that there will be some sort of branding and that's so you can easily recognize the product and it makes you feel good about buying this product over another one. You'll also see the name of the food and the food name must be a true description. For example, this yogurt is not a true Greek style yogurt, but it's a Greek style yogurt. So that's part of its name. If it was strawberry flavored, then it would have to be called a strawberry flavored Greek style yogurt. You can see the brand and supplier of the um, food. You'll also see a lot number, so the food can be traced back to when it was produced, as well as a best before or use by date. There will be a weight or volume for the product, and also a country of origin. Sometimes it will show ingredients are from overseas and it's packaged in Australia, while other labels will give you a percentage of the ingredients which are from Australia. And then there's the nutrition information panel. This gives us lots of information and most of this webinar is devoted to understanding this part of the label, which includes the ingredients list, the number of serves in the package and what the serve size is. And lastly, the nutritional analysis. We'll go through this in detail in a moment. There's likely to be health or nutrition claims, um, some of which are helpful and which, some which aren't. And I'll talk through those after we've talked about the nutrition information panel. There's also um, some products which will have a health star rating on the front, and I'll talk about that on our next slide. The health star rating system is a front of pack labeling scheme developed for use in Australia and New Zealand to help provide convenient and easily understood nutrition information on food packs. It gives an overall rating of the healthiness of a food product reflected as a star rating out of a maximum of five stars. Some products will also give specific information. So the top, that top picture gives you just what the uh, rating is, whereas some um, foods will have more information and will specifically talk about particular uh, nutrients. 
At the moment, the Health Star rating system is voluntary, so you won't see it on all packages, and you wouldn't expect to see it on things like um, fresh fruit and vegetables or other unpackaged foods. You wouldn't see it on vinegar and condiments, herbs and spices and so forth. You wouldn't see it on tea or coffee, and it won't be on single ingredient foods not intended to be eaten on their own, such as flour. And any of those packages where there's no nutrition information panel, it won't be on those either. It's important when you do use the Health Star rating um, to compare food products that you compare to like products. So for example, if you compared to breakfast cereals or to yogurts, you wouldn't compare a breakfast cereal with a yogurt using this system. The main thing to remember though is to choose the one with the more stars. Now, I don't want to talk too much about glycemic index or GI here, but um, it, it could be a webinar all on its own, but you will see this symbol on some food packages. Foods with the GI symbol have been laboratory tested to be a lower glycemic index, which means you'll have a lower and slower rise in blood glucose levels. If you want to know more about glycemic index, check out the Glycemic Index Foundation's website. Um, they have um, a great list of foods that you can look through to work out what foods are lowering GI. The ingredients list on the nutrition information panel shows all the foods ingredients in order from greatest to smallest amount by weight. If an ingredient is part of the name or a major characteristic of the product, then the manufacturer has to show the percentage amount of that ingredient. This, um, in this example, it's a fruit and nut muesli bar, uh, sorry, muesli, a <laughs> fruit and nut muesli. So the ingredients list shows the percent of oats, fruit and nuts in the product, as those are the ingredients that you would expect to see in a fruit and nut muesli. This is called percentage labeling. Just as uh, an amusing aside, um, percentage labelling was introduced in 2013 into Australia when there was outrage over the fact that meat pies often didn't actually contain any meat. Importantly, the ingredients list must also declare um, common allergens such as peanuts, tree nuts, like cashews, almonds and walnuts, crustacea, fish, milk, eggs, sesame, soya beans, lupins, wheat and cereals containing gluten like oats, wheat, barley, rye and spelt, as well as, so as sulfites if they're added at 10 milligrams or more, more per kilogram of the food. In this example, you can see um, that there's oats, there's nuts um, um, and wheat, and Often they might be bolded by the manufacturer and they will have a warning statement such as contains gluten containing cereals and tree nuts. You can imagine that the top three ingredients often make up the bulk of a product. So checking to see if any of those top three ingredients is a sugar, a fat or a salt um, is a good start when you read a, a food label. They give an indication that the product is high in sugar, fat or salt, if that's the case. Remember too, there's many different words used to describe sugars, fats and salt. Some examples of other words for sugars, for example, include cane sugar, agave syrup, glucose, maltose, corn syrup, solids, caramel and fructose. You can see this label, I've highlighted the words they've used for sugar, and they include sugar, rice, uh, no, sorry, malt extract, and honey. Uh, these are all types of sugars. So if you see a lot of words which mean sugar, then this is potentially a high sugar product. Examples of words which mean fats include glycerides, cocoa butter, lard, oil, butter, suet, hydrogenated fat and oils. Um, here I've highlighted words for fat in this ingredients list, including milk chocolate, 
milk solids, cocoa butter, cocoa mass, vegetable oil, it's in there twice. Um, so it is potentially a high fat product. Words for salt include things like sodium or salt itself, Himalayan salt, might have a fancy name, monosodium glutamate, brine, soya sauce. Here you can see I've highlighted all the words that mean salt in this ingredients list, including salt itself, baking powder, vegetable extract and yeast extract. So this product is quite likely to be a high salt product. Food additives must also be identified in the ingredients list, usually by their class name and then um, followed by the additive name or number in brackets. For this example, this product has three um, antioxidants, um, which I've highlighted there. Um, and just as an example, the antioxidant 300 is also known as ascorbic acid or vitamin C. If you're looking for a full list of additive names and numbers, it's available from www.foodstandards.gov.au. Foods that should be eaten before a certain date for health and safety reasons must be labelled with a use-by date. Otherwise, the best before date is required if the food has a shelf life of less than two years. Although it might still be safe to eat a food after its best before date, it will have lost some quality and some nutritional value. Food labels may also include directions for use and for storage. For example, where specific storage conditions are required for a food to keep its best before um, or used by date, those conditions must be included on the label. In this case, we've got a yogurt and it says storage, keep refrigerated. The nutrition information panel shows the average amount of energy, protein, fat, saturated fat, carbohydrate, sugars, and sodium in a serve and in a hundred grams or 100 ml for fluids of the food. The amount of any other nutrient or substance about which a nutrition content or health claim is made must also be shown. For example, the amount of calcium must be shown if a claim is made about calcium. Energy is measured in kilojoules and may also be listed in calories. The total amount of energy in a food is a combination of energy from the carbohydrate, protein and fat in the food. So if you're managing your weight or waistline, you would look for a choice which is lower in energy. Protein is needed for building and maintaining muscles, for a healthy immune system and is essential for metabolism. Common protein foods include fish, chicken, eggs, nuts and legumes. Um, so those foods, if they're labelled, would have higher levels of protein. Total fat includes all types of fats, monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, saturated and trans fats. Some labels, for example, um, typically margarine, butter and oil labels, may provide detail about what types of fats are present in their products. Most Australian foods are low in trans fats, so while they may trans fats might be listed on some foods, uh, usually margarines and butter, they're not generally a concern nowadays in those foods. Saturated fat is one type of fat that must be listed on all nutrition information panels. It's the type of fat that is most commonly linked with an increase in low density lipoprotein, LDL, or unhealthy cholesterol levels, and also any increased risk of heart disease. So aim to choose foods that are low in saturated fat. Carbohydrates are digested down into glucose by the body and raise blood glucose levels. So it's important to consider total carbohydrates, not just sugars when looking at how much the food will affect your blood glucose levels, as the total amount of carbohydrate will increase your blood glucose levels. Sugars can be added sugars or those found naturally in a food or ingredient such as milk or fruit. Added sugar tastes nice, but doesn't generally come with any health providing nutrients, while naturally occurring sugars found in milk or fruit come with the health giving 
nutrients or vitamins and minerals. Sodium is the amount of salt in a food product. Excess salt intake is listed, linked, sorry, with high blood pressure, which includes the risk of heart disease and some of the longer term complications of diabetes, such as kidney disease. So looking for low salt products or even no added salt products is a great idea. Dietary fibre is an important part of healthy, healthy eating as it helps fill you up, keeps your bowels regular and manage blood glucose levels. We should all be aiming for 25 to 30 grams of fibre every day. Fibre won't be shown on labels where you don't expect to find fibre, for example, in cheese. So when you're looking at it, two products and comparing them, should you use the um, per serve or the per 100 gram column, do you think? It's important to consider how much of the food product you'll eat for a start. Food manufacturers um, serves per package might be quite unreliable. Um, either underestimating what a typical person would eat or suggesting silly serve sizes like 2.5 serves per package. The per serve column relates to the nutrients in, the, in one portion of the food product based on what the manufacturer has stated under the serve size. If you plan to eat the entire package, then consider the content of the nutrient of interest, whether it's energy, fat, sugar, salt, whatever. Um, in the entire package, not just the manufacturer's serve. Different products will have um, different um, serve sizes. So when you are comparing products, uh, use the per 100 gram column or for liquids per 100 ml. This table gives you some ballpark figures to aim for when you're looking at the per 100 gram column of the food label. Uh, because every food is a little bit different, this char chart won't work for everything. For example, cheese is very high in fat, particularly saturated fat, so it won't meet these guidelines. Um, nuts are also less likely to meet the total fat guideline, although most of their fat is unsaturated. And many foods won't actually list um, calcium because um, they don't contain calcium but foods like dairy products and plant milks are likely to. Um, note that plant milks don't naturally contain calcium, so make sure you find one that has added calcium to keep your bones strong. Now, when it comes to nutrition claims, first of all, I'd like to say nutrition claims have to be true. However, some are a bit more meaningful than others. The meaningful ones say things like low fat, um, reduced salt, high fiber. Um, these claims can only be used if the food meets certain criteria. For example, a good source of calcium claim um, means the food must contain a certain amount of calcium, or at least that. While nutrition content claims are generally um, a good guide to healthier choices, it is important to check the claim by looking at the nutrition information panel. For example, products carrying low fat claims may not be low in total energy kilojoules when comparing with similar products. The claims which we often find most confusing are those that use pseudo words like light, L-I-T-E, in the past, they were used to indicate a light taste or light colour. And you may still see this on food products using labels which meet labelling guidelines for other countries rather than Australia. These foods cause so much confusion for Australians that have now been added to the nutrition claims as meaning light, L-I-G-H-T. So light foods must be 25% less of the nutrient in question when compared to the reference food. So that generally will be um, energy, fat, sugar, or salt. We'll have a look at an example of this now. So these are two different cheeses. We've got a regular cheddar cheese and a light cheddar cheese. So the one thing to remember is if the food you're looking at is very high in fat, in 
high in fat, sugar or salt, then 25% less isn't actually that much less. It's still going to be very high in that nutrient. If we take a close up of the fat, the total fat and the saturated fat for our regular cheddar cheese and light cheddar cheese, you can see that the regular cheddar cheese is 32.7% fat uh, for every 100 gram amount. So the light cheddar cheese has to be 25% less than the 30 odd percent, which in this example is eight five point grams less fat for every 100 grams, and it is. So while it is a lighter fat cheese, it's still quite high in fat and therefore high in energy or kilojoules. So you'd still need to be quite mindful of the portion size you would choose to eat. Nutrition claims about sugar and salt are similar. So when we think about everyday versus sometimes foods, when you, you look at choosing packaged foods that are ideally lower in energy, kilojoules, um, particularly if you're trying to manage your weight or waistline, we'd want them to be lower in total fat and saturated fat, especially if you have high cholesterol or heart disease. And you'd consider how much total carbohydrate is in the food product and how it affects your blood glucose levels. You'd look for lower added sugar, lower sodium, especially if you've got high blood pressure, and higher fiber. So you should be able to tell that all of that from the nutrition information panel. Um, you're looking for foods which provide you with lots of nourishment um, for everyday foods. Those treat foods, those sometimes foods, don't provide us with much nourishment and generally very high in added sugars, salts, and often saturated fat. Uh, but they are part of our life and our, um, our celebrations particularly. But they aren't everyday foods. Keep that in mind. Now, to summarise, don't be fooled by slick advertising. Think through nutrition claims. You may choose to use the Health Star rating or the GI Foundation's symbol as a guide, but remember they won't be on every packaged food. Read the nutrition information panel using the per 100 gram column to compare two different products. And think about the serve size that you're going to eat or drink and work out if this product is the right kind of product in that sort of serve size for you. Choose with your health in mind um, because what we, we are what we eat basically. Um, for more written information, check out some of the NDSS fact sheets. Uh, there's one called Understanding Food Labels and you can find that on the NDSS website. Um, the link is there. There's plenty of other fact sheets available there as well um, on food and many other topics. You can also purchase the Healthy Shopping Guide, a book listing a very large number of packaged food products which meet the guidelines of the National Diabetes Australia Dietitians Group. You can find it in the Diabetes Shop at www.diabetesshop.com. There's lots of um, National Diabetes Services Scheme uh, programs available from your state diabetes organisation at no charge if you're registered with the NDSS. Uh, they provide practical information um, and hands-on practice. Um, the one I'd recommend if you're interested in reading food labels is Shop Smart. So it actually gives you hands-on practice at reading labels. You can book in by calling the NDSS National Helpline on 1800 637 700. Thank you. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact the National Diabetes Helpline on 1800 637 700, where you can ask to speak to a health professional.
and thank you so much for taking the time to view this webinar today. Goodbye.